¿Cómo están ustedes? Otra vez, otra vez. ¿Cómo están ustedes? <laughs> My name is Shri Bose. I am from Fort Worth, Texas. I do not, unfortunately, speak Spanish well enough to be able to do my entire presentation in it, but I wish I could. Um, I am currently a junior at Harvard University, and I am so honored to be here today in the city of ideas, and I'm so honored to be able to share the stage with people who are so innovative and creative and people who are really changing the world. Um, but before I get too far off, I want to actually show you a video which will tell you a little bit about me and my life and my background. And also just because my life sounds so much better with music in the background. So here we go. Hi, my name is Shree Bose. I was the winner of the first Google Global Science Fair for my work with drug resistance in ovarian cancer. And I'm currently a sophomore at Harvard University. When I was 15, my grandfather died of cancer. I was so close to him and wanted to do something. I wanted to fight this disease and help others survive. I wanted to be involved in cancer research and see what was out there. So I started writing to all the local labs and professors, trying to find a way to get involved. I guess no one wanted a high school student. I received dozens of rejections, but it didn't stop me. I kept writing to universities until I found a mentor to take me on, Dr. Alokan and the bus. And that's how I became involved in cancer research at 15 years old. My project grew out of my work in the field. Chemotherapy patients can develop resistance to certain drugs, and I worked on finding a way to battle that resistance and make treatment more effective again. I've been participating in science fairs since I was a little kid, but nothing compares to winning the Google Science Fair. I got to meet with President Obama, I spoke at TEDx Women, and I had the honor of being named one of Glamour Magazine's Amazing Young Women of the Year. I even got a shout out from President Obama. A little ago, I got a chance to meet the winners of the Google Science Fair. Uh, one of the winners, uh, Shree Bose, did her first experiment in second grade by trying to turn spinach blue. Uh, in fourth grade, she built a remote-controlled garbage can. And for this science fair, at the age of 17, She discovered a promising new way to improve treatment for ovarian cancer at 17. Uh, and she also told me very matter-of-factly that she'll be going to medical school and getting a doctorate, uh, and I suspect she will do so. Uh, she did not like confidence. And it's, it's, it's young people like Shree, but also uh, the people on this stage uh, who make me incredibly hopeful about the future, uh, even at a time of great uncertainty. Their stories remind us that there's still discoveries waiting to be made and unlimited potential waiting to be tapped. Uh, all we have to do is encourage it and support it. I've had a whirlwind of incredible experiences and I'm excited to share what I'm working on now with you. Thank you. So I have to tell you, whenever I watch that video, I never actually feel like that is me on that screen. And there's a reason behind it. And the reason is that that video misses out on a lot of things. It misses out on the bad parts. Like that video is all of the good parts put into one nice little two minute clip. But the bad parts do exist. And they have for me. My entire path to where I am right now has been absolutely littered with failures. Uh, my first project about turning spinach blue actually was a complete disaster. I, I got a spinach plant and I got a syringe. I don't know why my parents let me have a syringe when I was in third grade, but that's okay. Um, I injected the spinach plant and then I forgot to water it and it died. And I took it to a science fair as my first ever science fair and people laughed at me. That, that's the story you don't hear. Um, my first summer working in a lab, I broke a lot of things. I broke a lot of glassware, a lot. Um, and I had done this project that I thought was absolutely amazing about breast cancer. I was really excited about it. And I went to the science fair that I had been presenting at for years and I won nothing. It's those feelings of being absolutely crushed and lost that you don't get to see in videos like this. But for me, they have definitely existed. And that's, that's why my journey really hasn't been about 
the achievements that you get to see, or really even about the larger number of failures that have accompanied them. My, my journey is more about the people who I've gotten to meet along the way. It's from when I was a little kid, and um, I was really cute back then. Um, but it's from when I was a little kid, and I would get to come home, and my mom would teach me my ABCs. My mom's here. Hi, mom. Um, <laughs> I deserve some applause. And my dad teaching me about algebra. My dad's also here. <laughs> um, or my brother, like, sitting me down and teaching me about atoms and molecules and cells and how the world came together. Um, those are the stories that have really created my entire path to where I am right now. And those are the people who have guided me along the way, who have picked me up when I was crushed and saying I never wanted to work on anything related to science ever again. And it's those people who showed me that it's not necessarily, the most important thing is not necessarily to set out to change the world. It's about finding something you really love, something you're really passionate about. And I, I had incredible opportunities along the way. My, my grandfather unfortunately passed away of cancer when I was 15, and I was a freshman in high school. I was learning about biology and cells, and I just didn't understand cancer. And so I started writing to professors in all of the universities in my area trying to find a mentor, and I only found one out of the dozens I emailed who, were, who was willing to take me on. So I, I got to go into the lab and work under the mentorship of Dr. Lokananda Basu, which was an incredible experience. And I don't think I would have had that experience unless I had had a lot of great mentors along the way. And these great mentors have taught me that it's important to follow your passions. It's important to find what you love and then create your own opportunities. And that's something I think we often miss out on. After, after I was the grand prize winner of the first ever Google Global Science Fair, I got to travel around the world talking to groups like this, groups with students and teachers. And I would have all of these students who would come up to me afterwards and they would say, I am interested in science. I don't know what to do next. And I always, for people interested in biology, I always sort of had this answer. I, I said, find a mentor, find somebody who is willing to teach you more, and then follow that. But when kids came up to me with things like technology or computer science, I never really had an answer for them. It was very frustrating to me. And so I thought that this was a major problem, and that led me to my next project. It led me to the next phase of my journey, I guess. Um, so at the beginning of this year, some friends and I actually co-founded a company um, which is making these hacker toolkits, which basically has all of the components for a fully fledged computer. And kids can hook everything together. Uh, the game will open up. Um, how, how many of you guys have ever heard of Minecraft? All right, we, we've got some Minecraft fans in the audience. <laughs> um, so Minecraft is a very, very popular game among kids. So what, what our interface actually allows kids to do is open into this modified form of Minecraft, which is a virtual world. And they can make virtual circuits between the microchip found in the actual kit and this virtu a virtual breadboard that's rendered on the screen. And then to pass every level, they have to physically build the electronics. So this allows sort of a fun, exciting introduction to electronics, technology, computer science. And I think the thing that I am most excited about for this is that I'm giving kids the tools to do what they are most excited about. These kids, we hope, will create an entire generation who are going to be inspired to make things, who will be inspired to create more technology, to push the boundaries of what they can do. Um, and that's sort of always been my passion along the way, whether it's through doing science fairs and trying to turn spinach blue, or getting involved in cancer research and creating those sorts of opportunities for myself. Um, that's something I've always been very passionate about, and it's something I continue to be. Um, so I am extremely excited about what we're working on. I, I think it has the potential to do a lot of incredible things, but I, I would say what I'm most excited about and what I'm working on now 
is actually what I imagine will happen in the future. We, we had some great speakers before talking about exponential growth. What I think inspires me the most is how powerful a single person is. The, my mom teaching me my ABCs, or my dad teaching me algebra, or my brother teaching me about how to look at the world and be excited. That's incredibly powerful. They passed that sort of excitement and wonder onto me. And today, I hope to give you guys a little piece of that, just as I hope to give an entire generation of kids that sort of wonder with computer science and technology through the startup that I'm working on. But what I want to leave you guys with is really this idea that I want to challenge you, but I don't want to challenge you guys to change the world, because that's, that's a big thing. That's a bold undertaking right there. What I want to challenge you to do is to find something little that you love, that you are passionate about, and you are excited to share with other people. And then I want you to think of creative, innovative solutions to any tiny problems that you are excited and passionate and you think you have the answers to. And then I want you to follow that. I don't want you to set out to change the world because that doesn't happen overnight. But I think if you can inspire somebody else and they can inspire even more people in the future, that's what is actually going to end up changing the world. And that's something really exciting. So it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thanks. And I love you use the word wonder because it's exactly why we, yeah, I, I think it's a good one as well. We, we chose Wonder 18, we chose that name for a reason. And I think you do pass on, just as your brother and your mother and your father passed on that wonder to you, you do pass on that wonder to us. And I wanted to ask you, it's such an amazing transition from your medicine interests, your, your scientific interests, well, it's also science, uh, electronics is also science, but from your medical interests, how come you decided to shift Definitely, yeah, no, that's a really good question. So I am still doing my degree in molecular and cellular biology. I'm still very passionate about following my own research interests. But I think getting to travel around the world talking to kids really gave me a new appreciation for the sort of inspiration and education that I got in science. And I want more kids to have that. And I want them to have that in whatever they're interested in so they can go out and do something incredible. I want them to be able to find labs or be able to create their own electronics, their own technology, and use that to do something really monumental in the future. And so I think that has always been my passion, um, and I'm excited to see where that goes. It will go far. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very so. much. Thank you.